minus numbers. I often get asked about minus numbers. What does a minus number mean? Well, I'm just going to rattle through some examples and maybe some of them will help a bit. Let's start off. Let's say this is the ground floor. You can see you might walk along the path here and go in the front door. This is like a block of flats or something. So let's say that's floor zero. Yeah, depending on which country you live in, that might not be floor zero. But let's call it floor zero. Let's be mathematicians and call it a mathematician floor zero. Well then, then what if I go up? What, what would the next level be? Well, I guess that would be level one or floor one and then floor two. But wait, what if I go back down to the bot back down to here and then I go down? Well, imagine thousands of years ago when people were first developing maths. They might have called that one. And then someone would have said, wait, this, this isn't very helpful because how do, how do I know, do you mean this one or this one? I don't know which one you mean. So then someone said, oh wait, let's put a minus in front. And then that's a way of recognizing which one we mean. And then if obviously if you go down further, that'd be minus two and so on. There you go. That's one way of thinking about it. Let's do another one. Temperatures. Let's look at this thermometer. This is a bit old fashioned. Thermometers now you can just kind of look on a digital readout. But a long time ago, there used to be thermometers that looked like this, and there was like a liquid inside. This red thing's a liquid, and that would that would go up or down depending on how hot it was. Anyway, so let's look at this old-fashioned thermometer. Ah, the temperature there is five. Wait, isn't it minus five? No, because that little dash, that's just like a marker, so you can see things. Anyway, what if the temperature is actually here, so it gets colder? Well, then that would be minus 5, and that would be minus 10. Minus f Again, it's solving this problem of someone at some point decided that this would be 0 degrees. But then it's like, well, what if it gets colder than 0? Well, I guess we'll have to, oh, let's, let's use negative numbers. That works. Okay, I like this example. Often my students find this the most useful. So let's say this is uh, let's say this is me, okay, and this is my friend Brian. I don't know. In reality, I don't have that much hair, and I don't even have a friend called Brian. And if I did, I'm not sure they'd have blue hair. Anyway, so Brian owes Brian owes me five pound, and he finds seven pound. How much money has Brian got? Well, Brian's now got two pound. Why is that? Because Brian's a good friend, and he says, "Oh, I just just found some money. I'll, I'll give you, um, I'll give you the five pound that I owe you." Anyway, so the question is, if he hadn't found the money, how much money would he have? Let's just look at Brian. Well, Brian, I would say, has got minus five pound. Oh my goodness, what does that mean? What that means is, he owes me five pound. So when he finds that seven pound, oh, he's actually only got seven pound minus five pound, which is two pound. Maybe that helped, maybe that didn't. Teachers, if you're a teacher watching this, I find that if you role play this with bits of paper, with like IOUs and stuff like that, it can work really well. It doesn't work quite so well in a video format like this. Um, I think this is probably one of the very common ways that negative numbers are taught, which is just this idea of a number line. And if you've seen number line used for lots of different things, well, then you're going to get familiar with it. So it can be a nice way of thinking about it. Oh, look, there's the number five. And there's the number minus five. So minus just means on the left of the number line. It's like I was saying before, at some point, if you're measuring things, you kind of go, let's call this zero. And then later on, someone goes, Oh, I've got a problem. I've just found something on the left, but but we already made that. We already decided what zero was, and then it's like, oh well, well let's use negative numbers. I'll fix that. <sighs> okay, phew, got away with that one. Um, let's just have another look on the number line. So three plus four. What's three plus four? You might pause this and have a go in your own time. So you start at three and you add four. One, two, three, four. So the answer to that is seven. 
and you might want to go minus 4. So if you start with 3, minus means you're going to go backwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, which means you end up at minus 1. Do you know what? It can be confusing, can't it? Because we just said minus 4 there. And what did we, what did we mean? We meant take away 4. And then when we said minus 1, we actually meant the position. <sighs> Whoa. Let's pretend I didn't say that. I still, I've been teaching maths for many, many years, works as a mathematician. I still don't really understand the difference between those two. But I find it doesn't matter because I can do the maths anyway and it kind of makes sense intuitively, but I can't really explain it. Let's do another one. Or oh, this is, I think this is really interesting. Okay. What's three times one? Well, it's just three, yeah? Yeah, it's just three because you've got one lot of three. Hmm. What's three times minus one? Well, actually, that is minus three. Wait, what? The reason is this minus sign here. That means, what, what, well, let's say flip. That means flip the number. So send it to the other side of the number line. Um, yeah. There you go. That may not make sense. But it might make sense after you've been doing minus times by minus is a bit longer. It's just like one little thought on it. And in case you are into the kind of minusing and timesing by minus numbers at the moment, let's look at what's minus 3 times 1. Well, that's just minus 3, yeah? Because if you times anything by 1, it stays the same. And what happens if you multiply something by minus 1? We now know that it flips to the other side of the number line, which means that minus 3 times by minus 1 goes to plus 3. I can think of one particular thing that might be a bit confusing. What if it was minus 3 times 2? Well, let's just be clear. Then you just go 1, 2. That would be minus 6. And if you had minus 3 times minus 2, well, it still becomes 6, but it's plus 6 because it also gets flipped to the other side and breathe this video is aimed at probably two types of people this last bit anyway maybe you already understood that maybe hearing someone else explain it just made you go oh okay that's given me some more ways to think about it alternatively if you if this is very new and you're still struggling with it that may have helped you a little bit but i would say kind of look around and find lots of different ways to think about things